What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Razer Phone 2. If you're in the market for a gaming phone or any Android phone, you're gonna to wanna to check out this phone. It's actually in a really good price range and it's got a lot of top end features. It's an older model, but still a very viable device. So let's check it out, stick around. So on the unboxing, I really like the way they packaged it. Everything felt really premium. Everything was nicely packed inside of the package. They look like they use high quality materials to pack everything. You know, they give you uh, all the instructions. They included a nice little Razer SIM SD card tool. So all the parts feel really premium. You do get a braided USB-C to USB-C charging cable. I'm not sure why they went down that road. So just take note of that. So you also get the 24-bit USB-C DAC adapter. So let's take a quick look at the specs here. On the display, we have a 5.72 inch IGZO, whatever that is, 120 hertz screen at 2560 by 1440p. On the processor, we have a Snapdragon 845, 2.80 gigahertz with a vapor chamber cooling. We will talk more about that later. On the camera, we have on the back, we have two lenses, a telephoto and wide lens at 12 megapixels. And on the front, we have an eight megapixel camera. We have 64 gigabytes internal storage with a micro SD card expandable to one terabytes, eight gigs of RAM. We have a 4,000 milliamp battery with wireless and fast charging. It's IP67 water and dust resistant. Now on the back, we have an integrated Chroma RGB Razer logo that you can customize to your liking and have it breathe or pulse all different types of colors. Now the only physical buttons you're gonna have on this device is gonna be the volume rocker on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, you have the power button integrated with the fingerprint scanner. On the dimensions, we have a 6.24 by 3.11 by 0.33 inches thick and weighing in at 220 grams. Any games you throw at this phone, it's gonna handle it without any issues. There's no hiccups or frame drops. Everything is super silky smooth and it looks absolutely crisp. Now let's listen to how those speakers sound. Now the speakers, the sound quality is just amazing. No matter what you're doing on the phone, watching a movie, you're playing games, it just sounds so great. It's like you're sitting at home on your couch on the big screen TV with a sound bar or surround sound system. Here's some video from the rear camera. It does do a decent job of recording, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. So this is the front facing camera and video. This is the audio and image quality you can expect from the front facing camera. Like I said before, it is an eight megapixel and you can also get up to 60 frames per second on it. Now I also tried to take some pictures in low light and outside it was kind of cloudy out and try to get some color in the pictures. Most of the images were kind of washed out. The colors didn't really pop for me. Um, sometimes it look a little grainy. Now on some of the photos, I tried to use the portrait mode and for me, it just did not work properly. It just seemed to be blurring everything out. I could not get it to look good. It just looked very blurry all around. On the camera, you're not gonna get too many features with it. You're only gonna get the portrait mode, a beauty mode, which actually just kind of uh, lightens your skin up a little bit and tries to make you a little more beautiful than what you are, but everybody's beautiful, so you don't really need that and then the panoramic mode. So also on the camera, you do have image stabilization. On the back camera, you can get up to 4K, 30 and 60 frames per second. And on the front camera, you can get 1080p with 30 or 60 frames per second. So with the Razer phone, of course, it is a gaming phone. So you're gonna have a little more customizations than you would on a regular Android phone. So you have what they call Game Booster and you can actually go into each one of your games. So if you wanna increase the CPU, you wanna change the resolution or you want better frames per second, you can do that for each one of your games or you can actually set it to conserve more battery if you're obviously trying to make that battery last a lot longer. I was able to get almost six hours of on-screen time. That was a lot of heavy gaming, watching videos, you know, keeping the brightness all the way up, even turning on the RGB logo 
and at 120 hertz refresh rate. If you're gonna wanna use this device all day long, you're definitely gonna wanna try tweaking those settings, especially that RGB logo, and then maybe dropping down that refresh rate to maybe about 90 or so. Um, that's really gonna help that battery lasts a lot longer throughout the day, if you, especially if you're gonna be gaming. So on the downside of things, I think, you know, some people may or may not care, but the phone is rather blocky. I mean, it doesn't look like much, you know, it's just a really just a rectangle shaped phone. Um, you know, to hold it's okay, but you know, would it be nice to have a little more rounded corners? Maybe that's my personal opinion because I've had tons of Samsung phones and they do feel good in the hands. Um, I think they could work on that on their next uh, model if they do continue with this. The camera's kind of mediocre. You're not going to get the best quality out of the videos and images you're going to take. Um, so that is kind of the downside, but you know, for that price point, you can't really, you know, expect too much, but it does get you through the day for normal everyday stuff. But obviously Samsung and Apple are way better hands down. Now, the other bad thing, that I really like about the phone is they talk about the vapor cooling chamber um, that's kind of integrated on the CPU to keep it cool while you're gaming for long periods of times. I notice if you're gaming for more than 20, 30 minutes, um, it's gonna get quite warm like it would any other phone. I didn't see any difference whatsoever. It still gets warm. I mean, any phone that you have and you're really working all of the you know hardware on it, it's gonna get warm but it's kind of a gimmick when you say it's a integral part of the phone that's supposed to help manage the heat and keep it cool and it doesn't actually do that. So it kind of sounds like a gimmick. Um, they kind of wish they didn't really talk about it if it doesn't actually work. So I guess the other downside about the phone, well, I guess not really about the phone, but about Razer. The accessories are kind of expensive. They have a RGB wireless dock that's like 90 bucks. I mean, you can get a wireless charger for like 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. Uh, maybe even less than that sometimes. Now the other accessory they have is kind of dedicated gaming controllers that you can get. It's almost like a Nintendo Switch-esque more or less and you can actually put your phone on it, you know, lock it into place and you have full Joy-Cons on left and right and you can play full-fledged games on it. So my personal opinion, I think the Razer Phone 2 is a pretty solid phone for that 300, 350 price point. You can probably get it on sale for less than that if you shop around but it's got some really great features. The specs are really good on it. The speakers, I think, are just superb. I mean, they sound so crisp, so loud. I mean, you can feel the vibration in your fingertips when you're gaming on it. I mean, I think the speakers are just, they're just awesome. I mean, you can't go wrong with those speakers. On top of that, you've got that 120 hertz screen. It is just super smooth and buttery. No matter what you're doing on the phone, you know, if you're watching videos, you're gaming, scrolling through the phone, you know, switching apps, it just looks and feels so much better. And I know for any gamers out there who play on 144 hertz and up, and they go to a 60 hertz, it's, it's just night and day. You can totally tell the difference. It is so much better to have a phone with a higher refresh rate. It has almost everything a top-end smartphone has, except the camera. If you could live with that, I think you should definitely go ahead and check out this phone and you'll definitely be happy with it. So that's gonna wrap up this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the review of the Razer Phone 2. As always, I'll put the link in the description below so you can head to the Amazon page. If you are interested in this device or learning more about it, if you do purchase this phone using my link, it does help support the channel and it gives me a little bit of kickback. So thank you for all your support and watching all my videos and I'm looking forward to what 2020 brings. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, put some comments below if you have any questions on the phone, give me those thumbs up and I'll catch you guys all in 2020.